Okay, so hello again. Uh, let's uh, continue our work, but before doing so, what I will do is this. I will uh, ask you to please, um, I know many of you have problems to do uh, your workshops and understanding concepts, uh, but please, uh, when you want to contact me, uh, do it as follows. So what happens is that you uh, log into Microsoft Teams, and then you click on Calendar. Click on Calendar. This is all my available times. And as you see, these are the students that we were talking with before. So this one, he did not use scheduling calendar. So if you go to Microsoft Teams, click on Calendar, you can click on New Meeting. And in your mu new meeting, you use Scheduling Assistant. You click over there, and you add the name of the people who you want to add required attendees. You put Farlad over there. As soon as you do that, it puts all my available times over here. Then you can select the time, select minimum of half an hour. Do half an hour. If it in half an hour doesn't get resolved, we make it more, OK? So set half an hour of time, set a meeting. I'll receive an email. You will have it. You know that I'm available at time. And I'll respond to you either with accepted, which means the meeting is accepted, we're going to meet. Or it's going to be tentative, which means I am tr I'm going to try to come, but 100% not sure. Or I decline with a new time. I'm going to decline, say, I can see you at this time and this time. And then you will reply. So like that, we'll find a match. We'll go on Microsoft Teams. If you have any problem with your computer working, I'll take over your computer and fix it. If there's a problem with your code, you push your code into GitHub. You ask you in our meeting chat. You send me the URL of your GitHub. I'll pull out the code. I'll open my desktop, show it to you, share my desktop with you. You will see me fixing your code for you, and then you can diff it and see exactly what I did to help you, OK? So we'll, we'll deal, deal with it that way. If you can't, do the GitHub thingy, still see me. We'll find a way to go through it, OK? But with GitHub, it's much more quicker and more efficient, OK? Uh, so that's that. All right, so last time we talked about, in, in the lab, we talked about SCANF. And actually, our labs are pretty good. Because there is no class after, we can stay longer. So yeah, it's a good thing. We're going to do the labs. And if you have any problem, you can stay after the lab. And we're going to go through your problems in the lab after 5 o'clock. So clear your schedule if you, are, if you are open to that one. And I cleared at home, so they know that I'm going to come late. <laughs> okay, So uh, we can stay a little more if we have any problem in the lab. So whatever time we lose in the lectures that we don't have, because I'm, I have five minutes from that class to this class, we're going to make it up in our uh, lab time. So try to at least put half an hour extra so in case I have to cover some of the things, we can stay more and do our things over there. Last time we, uh, we, uh, um, in the lab, we talked about SCANF. And SCANF is uh, a function like printf. It's a printf sister. Uh, it receives information from keyboard. Printf prints it on the screen. SCANF receives it from keyboard. And the good thing about SCANF is that uh, it reads stuff uh, in a formatted way. That's the F, what F is standing for. You can put the format specifiers, as I mentioned over here, as percent %D for integer, F for float, LF for doubles, and percent %C for single character, and get stuff from the keyboard. They're all tricks and little uh, uh, glitches that you need to know about when you are using SCANF. When the time comes, one by one, we're going to go over it for now. We're going to do very simple data entry. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, for now, because uh, students come and say, OK, I, I, lo I loved it that I could actually get an integer. Can How can I enter my name inside the program? That's st still too rich for our blood, OK? We're going to have a few more sessions. When we get to arrays and understand what arrays are, that's when we can actually enter text into, the, into our program. For now, it's just numbers, OK? Numbers or single character. Are we OK down to this point? 
All right. So, so we, we talked about scanf, and we said scanf receives the format specifier of what it reads, and then the address of the variable. And I said whenever you see an ampersand beside the name of the variable, that's what you say. You say address of. Never say ampersand. Never say and sign. Always name it address of. And that helps us understand when the time comes what really address means and how do we deal with it. Uh, I kind of explain it. It's a pretty lame way to explain it, but uh, I, I always give you this example is that when you want to show something, you just show it, right? Well, when you want to put something somewhere, you need to know where it is. I have to tell you, put this bottle on that table. So I have to give you address of a place to put the things in. That's why Scanf needs to know the address to put the stuff in. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That's why it always receives address of. Scanf can also work in series, which means whatever you put over there, it's going to actually format it. So in here, we enter two numbers, one and two. So um, to, to make it more clear and nice, I could actually do it like this print, and I put another printf over here. So do something like this to make it more uh, clear and nice. So I would say the first one is says, says enter two numbers, goes to new line. Then it prompts one to indicate you are entering the first one, and then it receives it. And therefore, when the program runs, Again, it's just a quick review of what we've done last time. When the program runs, uh, at the back, can we see the screen? Can we see the fonts? OK? I'm going to make it smaller and smaller and tell me, can you see it now? Now? Still good? Now? OK, so let's leave it at this, because I have more real, uh, real estate over here so I can work with. All right, so, uh, and we're going to put this one over here. So <clears throat> when the variables are created, as you see, when I actually go over them, you'll see they're garbage inside. You bring the hover the mouse, garbage inside, hover the mouse, garbage inside. You can do the exact same thing with Xcode. It's, it works the same way. Then I'm going to say print, uh, pr enter two numbers. And as you see, the cursor is standing at the first line now. As soon as printf is running, it prints it, and because I said new line, this, the cursor stands at the next line. And then I'm going to say print f1. Now it says 1, and cursor is standing here. That's when I invoke scanf. Now scanf waits for the keyboard, keyboard to actually do the entry. So now the program is pausing, waiting for me to enter. Now I enter over here 15, and I hit enter. And as you see, num1 now holds the value 15. Then printf2 will happen, so it actually prompts the user, and then it's written, and then I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the second one. I'll put over here 35, and I hit enter. And as you see now, num2 holds the value 35. Through the operation of plus, I can ask the com com compiler uh, to, to add them up. Therefore, it's going to be 50, and the value 50 will be put in sum. Again, when you have an assignment, the right side happens first. Calculate it, the, and it will, do, it will uh, find out the right side of assignment. First gets evaluated, it calculates whatever it is, then puts it in left side, and therefore the value is going to go into sum. And then I'm going to say print the sum right over here in percent %d. So just to make it nicer, I'm going to say the sum is, I'm going to put it in a squared bracket just to see that this is really formatted. Wherever I put the percent %d, it's going to be replaced by the value of what is getting printed. And it's going to print the sum is 50. And we have the answer. Uh, so that's how it is. That, that's how scanf works with only one variable being received. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? All right. All right, so um, let's be done with this. Now we are going to talk about expressions to understand exactly how expressions work in C. So plus, minus, arithmetic stuff, OK? We call those things operators, OK? Operators. Operators in C language are plus, minus, and all the things that you know, OK? We're gonna, I'm going to go through them one by one. 
arithmetic ones, logical ones, to understand exactly what they mean. Well, what you need to understand, there is one thing common between all the operators in C language. That is, every single operator in C language returns the value processing its operands. When I say operator and operand, what do I mean? I mean, let me just save this. So I'm going to call this one a.review.cpp. That's the review of last day. Now I'm going to open this one again. Oh, did I call it cpp? Just a second. So uh, let's talk about operators. First, understand what the operators are, and then we're going to continue with the rest of the things that we need to know. When I say an operator returns something, it means So I'm going to put a placeholder. So I'm going to say A plus plus B. When I say something like this, it means plus is an operator and accepts two operands, A and B. And it will do something with them based on its definition and returns the value out. So A plus B returns the sum of two numbers. So if I go C is set to. C will be set to sum of A plus B. We understand this. Are we okay with this? Okay. So let's say in here, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna ask you the questions. I know it's, it sounds like kindergarten, but we're gonna do that. So let's say A is 10 and B is 20. Okay. So what is the value of C now? <clears throat> what is the value of C? 30, right? <clears throat> now, if I do this, <clears throat> what's going to be the value of A? What's going to be the value of A? 30, correct? Is an assignment an operator? Assignment is an operator, right? It's an operator. It accepts two operands. Its job is to set the value of left operand to the value of right operand. That's what it does, right? Following the rule of C language, even assignment returns a value. So what is the value of B now? 30. So again, I just did that just to take the algebra out of your brain. <laughs> The assignment in here is not a scale, it's setting. It doesn't mean left and right have the same value. It means that whatever the right side of the whatever the right side of the value will be, the left one will be set to that. So first it does the right one, which means setting A to C, then it returns the value that is 30, so B will be. That's why in C language you can A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to C. They all work. It starts from right side and goes to left. Are we okay with this? So minus plus minus, we all know what is that. So if I say A is equal to 4, and uh, 10, and uh, B is set to <clears throat> 4, something like that. And if I say, for example, uh, C is set to A minus 5, we know exactly what that is. I'm not going to, we are, we are okay with this, right? All right? That means C becomes actually 5. If I say C is set to, so, so in here, <clears throat> I know it's silly, but I'm going to actually write it. A and B are 30. Okay? So this one, let's make it 4. So now C is 6. six. Right? Or let's do it like this. Oh, sorry. I wanted to do four and then, you know, anyways. <laughs> so if I say C is A plus four, then C is, what is C? 14, right? Now, this is a tricky part, OK? C is A divided by B. What is the value of C? 
That's when you have to think. You have to ask a question. You have to tell me, what is the type of A? If A is a floating point number, then you have to do the math and go with the floating point. It's going to be two point whatever. OK? But if A is an integer, it's incapable of holding partial parts. So 10 divided by 4 is 2. There is no partial part. It is incapable of it. You want, we, are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? So let's do it. So I'm going to change it like this. So if I actually make this one, say, 11, then what is the difference? What's going to be the value of C? C. 11 divided by 4? Still 2, right? Still 2. It doesn't make any difference. Now, there is another thing in here that we don't have in math that we have in C, plus, in C language, and that's modulus. So it means as if I can actually say C is A mod B. A mod B means divide and return the remainder of it. OK? So if I do A mod B, A is, what is the value of A? A is 11. B is 4, correct? 11 divided by 4 is 2. 8. 11 minus 8, 3. Therefore, it's going to be 3. Whatever the remainder of, of the division is will go in there. So that's a new thing that we need to know. OK? So remember. Percent is called mod. A mod B, it returns the remainder. Okay, whatever the remainder is, that's going to be the value. So if I do something like this, for example, if I say C is A mod, uh, not A, so B mod 2, then what's going to be the answer? C will be 0 because it is divisible by it, therefore, there is no. Thing. Are we okay with this? Okay. These are arithmetic ones, and it works. They work with doubles and stuff. If, if these were integers, then it would work. But if it's the floating point, then modulus doesn't make sense for it because there, there is no remainder with floating points. You do the division as long as it goes, right? So mod is only for integers. There, it's not for doubles, OK? Doubles only work for the rest of them. Uh, are we OK down to this point? So this is only for int, not only for integers and not for mod. OK? Uh, next thing, logical operators. We have logical operators, comparison operators, operators that compares, compare between these. You, have, you can actually ask the, the, the program, is something bigger as something? Is something smaller as something else? And something like that, OK? The reason, if I told you. Am I older than that lady? What would you say? What is the answer? <laughs> you just insulted that beautiful lady over there. <laughs> you would definitely see it. You say, yes, I am older than that lady, right? The answer is either yes or no. Do we understand? So for logical operators, the answer is always yes or no. And what is yes in C language? One. What is no? Zero, OK? That's when C language is telling something to you. Remember that. So when you ask for truth or falsehood, it's always zero or one. But later on, we'll see. When you're examining a value and asking the C language if this thing is true or not, so if you are actually putting something here for C and say, hey, C, is this true or not? C looks at the value. If the value is 0, it says it's false. If the value is not 0, it says true. So value 952 is a true value if you look at it as truth or falsehood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a Boolean expression is a, a, a Boolean value when C tells you Result. So let me, let's put it this way. So if I do something like this, if I say uh, C is equal to A greater than B, the value of C will be 1. If I say C is set to A 
A being equal to B. So as you see, when you put two assignments, it means checking for equality. Checking for equality. So the result of, so C at line 20, I can't see from here, 24, <laughs> C at line 24 is zero because A and B are not equal, correct? Are we all okay with this? Anybody have any problem with this? So what are these things, these operators, the comparison operators? The comparison operators are as follow. It is greater than, less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal, equal, not equal. These are the things that you can check in operators. And go to expressions and you go read them, it's going to tell you exactly what it is. So uh, study the, the notes and that's where they come from. All right? We have other operators that work like this, that, and I'm going to tell you only uh, two of them, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to draw something over here for you and see uh, if you can actually tell me what is this. So let me see if it's going to actually work with my finger or not. So um, let's put it, uh, I think um, this is the one. So let's have this, and let's say this is a light bulb. Okay, we connect this light bulb to a battery. And in here, I have a switch. Okay, now is the light on or off? Off, because nothing can pass through, right? But as soon as I close the, the electricity passes through and light goes on. Do we understand this? This is a zero state. When you close it, it's one. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? All right. Bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. So let's have my light bulb over here, and I have the battery over here, and then this is the thing, and I have the first switch, and I put the second switch. Okay? So I have two switches over here. I have switch A and I have switch B. Are we okay with this? For the light to go on, what should happen to switch A and B? They both should be one, correct? We call this and in C language. So if you say, if you say C is equal to B and A, that's what it means. It means if A and B are non-zero values, see now C is checking. It's not telling you what the value is. If A is 25, B is 32, C will be 1, because they are not 0. But if A is 0 and B is 25, it's still 0. Why? Because if one of them is closed, the other one is open, electricity won't pass, right? And if so, the only way for C to be 1 is for A and B both be true. True, when C checks, is non-zero value. Are we okay with this? This is an and, okay? And actually, it's not one and. I made a mistake. Again, old habit. I made a mistake. It is actually like this. So you have to actually write it as follows. So it is actually C equals A and B. You need two ands side by side. Two ands side by side means and. A single one means completely different thing, just you never do that. So you put two ands side by side, that means and. So if A is true and B is, B is true, C becomes one. If A is false, B is true, C is. So you know what happens, right? And if they are both, so, so in this case, the only way this can go true is when they are both one. Are we okay with this?
So now I have this, okay? And what I'm going to have will be this one. Oh! Too far. So this is A, this is B, and this is my light. My artistic values is killing me, bro. <laughs> so now, what do I need for the light to go on? Either A or B or both. If they are on, light goes on. The only way the light could be off is when they are both zero. Are we OK with this? This is called OR. This is called OR. So to actually specify something like this, you can do this. C is equal to A bar R B. It's the character above the backslash, single line, a bar. OK? So you put two bars, that means OR, A or B. It means if A is true, you don't even need to check B, right? It's the same thing for the other one. If it's an and, so if, it's, so, so if I have this scenario over here, so if I have something like this, if I have, if I have uh, x is set to y and z, if y is 0, do I need to check z? No. If y is 0, 0 and, it means that the, the circuit is broken. I don't need to check anything. I don't even need to look at z. x definitely is 0. It's the exact opposite for, 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 for or. If a is true, you don't need to check b. No matter what b is, c will be true. Are we OK with this? And this is called an or statement. So we have and, and we have or. Are we OK with this? Any questions now to this point? Yes. The light goes up. So if one of them goes on, C is true. Doesn't matter what. Are we good? Are we OK? The last one that is the most difficult one to draw, let me see if I can actually draw it. Trying to think how to draw that. I will, but I will, I will attempt it. So that's my light. That's the circuit. And that's the battery. OK. OK? <laughs> Let's say this is A. OK? If I open A downwards, what happens to this? If I pull this down, what happens to this? It closes the other one, right? So if A is false, whatever is up there will be true. Because it pulls the other one down, right? They are connected through with something. Okay. So if I write another one, so it's going to be like this. So this is like this. <laughs> I 
So this is the second thing. So when I pull it down, it pulls the other one. A becomes false, but whatever is up there is exact opposite. Do we understand this? So if A is true, whatever is up there is false. When A is false, whatever is up there is true. Do we understand this? OK. This is called not A. Not A. Got it? So when you say not A, it means whatever A is, it's opposite. If it's 0, it's false. If it's false, it's 0. It's the exact opposite. It kind of reverses the switch's position. Are we all OK with this? Are we OK? And these are the three things you need to know about logical operators. These are logical operators. And with logical operators, we're going to write statements. Yes, my dear. Oh, we'll see. Oh, I'll give you examples. Oh, we've got to go through it. You'll see. Well, first, I want to you, you know the operations. And then we're going to, um, now we're going to start in a second to write code. OK? So we understand what is arithmetic operators. They work like math, but they are kind of different with integers and doubles. Integers don't have partials. Doubles do. Um, and what do we, and uh, uh, for uh, comparison operators, when we compare things, they return true or false comparing two values. All right? And uh, logical operators, they can be and, or, and, not. And is a binary operator, which means it receives two operands, compares the two, gets the, the, uh, the, the value of left and right. If they are both true, uh, it is true. That's and. In any other case, it's false. Or is a binary operator. It receives two, which means if both are false, it's false. Any other case, it's true. And not is always opposite. It gets one. It's a, it's a unary operator. It gets only one thing, one value. Are we OK? And plus and minus, they can be unary too, by the way. You can say minus 2. Plus doesn't do anything, but you can write. You can write plus 3. <laughs> it is plus. It doesn't do anything, but <clears throat> are we OK down to here? All right. Operators, then. So those are the operators. This main is not doing nothing, so. Um, Anyways, let me just collapse this condition thingy and write something in me. So, how do we repeat things in C language? How, pardon me. Oh, yeah. How do we repeat this in C language? Like, how can I do something over and over and over and over and over? Like when I'm, for example, in previous program that I have written, I was find, finding the sum of two numbers, right? How do I do it so many few times? So uh, if I actually bring the previous program of mine up here and turn it into a function, I know how to create functions, right? So I'll just copy this main, copy. And in here, I'll paste it. I'll take the return out because I'm not returning anything, right? And in here, I'm going to say void. And let's call it mm, I cannot say sum because there is a sum in here. <laughs> you cannot use the same name, so it, uh, it's not you want to make it average? Nah. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, calculate sum. OK? So that's the name of the function, and immediately I put something up here. Copy, paste. So now I can say over here, calc, calculate, sum, and it does the same thing for me. We know that, right? I just call the function instead of doing that. And if I run the program, it runs the exact same way, absolutely no difference. So if I run the program, control F5, three years later when it runs, you will see it actually says 1. In here, I'll put 20. I'll put 30. It tells me sum is 50, right? We've done that. What if I have 50 numbers and I want to do it? What do I do? Write this 50 times? That's the thing about the computer. As I mentioned before, computers are dumb as a doorknob. They are very difficult to talk to. 
But if you teach them to do something with extreme difficulty and lots of problem, if you actually teach, them, teach it to do something, it can repeat it so fast, so many times, right? That's what we call a loop. A loop statement in C language, you only need one. All the loop statements in C language, they're all translated to one. And that is called while statement. It's called while. And it's very English. So I'll say, while I'm teaching, listen. What does that mean in English? It means as I'm teaching, you're listening. Now I'm going to go, <whistles> you're not listening anymore because I'm not teaching anymore, correct? So you are constantly checking the condition and see if I am teaching or not, and you repeat listening to me. As soon as I stop, you don't do it anymore. That's what a while loop is. So in here, I'm going to say, while. In here, I'm going to say one. What is one? True, correct? So I'm going to say while. It's true, right? I'm going to say while true. So while a true thing is happening. While true. It means it's going to keep doing that calculation forever. This program never ends. If I run it, I have to actually terminate it using control C. It will never stop. Take a look. If I run the program, it's going to say, because while is true, right? So it comes over here, says, while, is it true? Yes. Calculate sum. It's going to calculate the sum. 20, 40, and it's going to tell me 60, right? Comes to the end of the loop, goes back up. Is it still true? Yes. So this will run forever and ever and ever. Never stops. There is no way for me to stop this. Unless I do control C and terminate the program using operating system. So I told to operate, and as you see, it actually crashed on me. It's telling me, hey, you stop the program before ending. So it was an endless loop. How can I do it? How can I actually do something in here several times? It's very simple, actually. We know that we can create variables with values in them, right? So I can have something over here called, say, um, let's do it like this. I'm putting all the things that I have. How many things I have in here? One, two, three, four, correct? I'll put them at the table. I have four things. Because I am incapable of counting, you put those things for me and say, walk towards there and come back. And every time you do that, pick one of them until nothing's left. So I'll pick one. I'll go. I'll come back. Oh, there's another. I'll pick one. I'll go. I come back. Oh, there's another. I go. I come back. Oh, another. I'll go. I come back. Huh? Nothing is here. I stop. Right? That's exactly what we're going to do. How many times do I want to add stuff? Four times? I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to say, Int num. Now I can do it in the next line or I can initialize it. I can say equal to four. Or I can put it afterwards. If I put it over here, num will never have a garbage in it. It will start with four. Even better. I could have, I could have say integer num and num is equal to four. Would do the same thing, but first num would have garbage, then the garbage is overwritten by four. And then in here, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say while num is not equal to 0, right? Do the calculation, then num is equal to num minus 1. Remember how the calculations work? First the right side, then the left side, right? Let me stand over here when you're taking a picture. Okay. <laughs> she was taking a picture, I was taking credit for it. I wrote that program. Me. It was me. Anyway, so what is it exception thrown over there? What does it say? Uh, I don't know what is that. 
Anyways, it's from, oh, it's from last execution because it's still running. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah, so as you see over here, it's telling me that debugging stopped and yeah, like it's bugging, it's telling me that, hey, you ran it incorrectly and so on and so forth. But how, this, how does this one work? And not only that, I can, so uh, are we okay? Uh, so down to, down to this point, we're okay? All right, so if I actually run the program now, I'm just gonna run it, then I'm gonna walk through it. So I enter two numbers, 20, 20, right? 30, 30, 10, 10. Now I'm going to go 40, 40, and stops. What happened? Let's walk through it. OK? We can actually, yeah, so, so let's actually come over here. It starts, num is 4, correct? That 4 is visible up there? We can see that, right? OK? So is 4 not equal to 0? The answer is yes. Yes is true. It returns 1. Therefore, it's true. It comes in, does the calculation, whatever it is, right? Comes back over here. Now, num is 4. Num minus 1 is 3. It puts the 3 in num, so when we come down over here, now num is 3, correct? Goes up. Is 3 not equal to 0? Yes. So it calculates the thing. And 10, whatever, goes back over here, right? And now what does it say? Num is 3 minus 1. Num becomes 2, correct? Comes up. Calculate sum. Again, it's going to calculate the sum. 20, 30, all right? Comes down over here. Num is 2. 2 minus 1, 1, still 1 is not equal to 0. Calculates the sum. I know it's boring, but what can we do? 30 and 30, 19 is 49. Hit enter, and we go out. Now, num is 1. 1 minus, mi minus 1 is 0. 0 is not equal to 0. That is a false value. While ends. That's how we repeat things. And that's the only thing you need. All the other loops in C language are done that way. Now we can actually make it more intelligent. What we can do, we can do it, for example, saying printf percent %d calculations left. Right? What did I do? Oh, percent %s, sorry, d I meant. Calculations left, and I'll put over here num. So it's going to actually tell me how many calculations left, and I'm going to do like this. Now when I run it, I'm not going to wonder what, when, when the heck it's going to end. It actually tells me when it's going to end. So when, when I start, initially it's going to say four calculations left. I'll go 10, 10, 20, three calculations left. It actually tells me 50, 40, 39, 40, 1, and 1, and done. OK? Are we OK down to this point? Of course, my grammar is not because it says one calculations. OK? So believe it or not, that's why I say it's very difficult to actually write a program that is right. So my program has a grammatic error in it. That's a bug. It can be fixed easily. I'm not going to say it to you yet, but give me two seconds, we'll fix it soon. OK? Are we OK down to this point? Are we good? So with these type of loops, you can do many different things. OK? You can, uh, uh, again, this is all you need. And I could write it in another way. So let me, I'm going to say over here, uh, B, it's, uh, uh, call it, descending loop. Why do I call it descend? Because a counter is going down. What I can do is this. I can actually set this one to 0. And I can say, while num is less than 4, do this. Right? It's the same thing. Instead of 
minus 1, I can do plus 1. By the way, I have good news. We have short handwriting in C language. In C language, if you want to add 1, you can simply do this. It adds 1 to it. That's why C++ is called C++, because it's C language with object orientation. They called it plus plus because it has one more feature than C. That's what the language is called. OK? So plus plus adds only one to it. We could have done it that way. All right? <laughs> that's OK. Anyway, so, so that's that. So uh, now in here, I'm going to do it like this. And instead of saying calculations left, I can say printf percent d. Uh, yes. I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. So I, instead of this, I could have written this. That's comment. It means ignore. I tell the compiler to ignore. So I can say num plus plus. That's it. It adds one to Did I answer the question? If I called the variable i, I would have called it i. I called the variable num, I have, I'm adding one to num. If it was age and somebody grew older, I would call it age plus plus. It means one year older. <laughs> oh, it all depends. The, the, the name of the variable is. OK? So now in here, I can actually say printf percent d num, right? So when I start it, and I'm going to make it a little less if you don't mind. I'm going to make it three, or let's make it three, because four is too much. I want to test this quickly. <laughs> OK, so when I run this program now, you will see that actually, uh, oh, 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 oh. you know what I did? I compiled the old one. Oops. Uh, copy. Paste. Ignore what I'm doing. Let me just pause it. Yeah. So now if I run the program, you will see that it's going to say printf 0, and then it, and it shows it that way. So if I go control F5, you will see it actually control F5 to, to run it. It says 0, you see, and it says enter two numbers. And then I'll go 2020. Then it says 1, enter two numbers, right? And then uh, 30, 30, then it says, so it starts from 0. So that's not a good thing. I want it to start from 1, right? Also, so I want it to start from 1. So in here, I will, uh, did you get what happened? Because that, OK. I wanted to put a row number. So um, how do I put, uh, so let me just enter two numbers. Instead of 1, 2, I'm going to remove the 1, 2 over here not to be confusing, just the prompt. So this is what happens. So now it starts, it says 0, enter two numbers. Then I'll put 20, 20, 30, 1, enter two numbers. And two numbers, two numbers, and finishes. 0, 1, 2 is three times, right? But that's not good for a user. We are programmers. We know we started from 0. We know how it worked. If you want the programmer to see it right, they need to see one, two, three, right? So what I can do, I can play a trick. In my printf, I can say print num plus one. I'm not changing the num. I'm just adding one to it. I'm going to say if it's zero, show one. If it's one, show two. So when I run this, now it kind of shows it nicely. So it's going to actually say one, enter two numbers, then two, and three. And it goes away, right? So now it's three times. So now this one is not descending. It's actually ascending. So it doesn't matter what you use or what your condition is. You can actually ask user, press 1 to continue, 0 to quit, instead of a loop like that. And put that in a condition. If user enters 0, calculation ends. If user enters 1, you do another one. So now you're interacting with users. So what I can do over here is this. I can actually do this. I can say, uh, b dot ascending. Oops, 
product. See? Okay. So now I can actually talk to user, and let's get rid of these. I don't want it anymore. So now instead of having that, I'm going to say done. I'm going to call that num integer done. OK? Integer done is equal to 0. What does it mean? It's not done, right? So I'm actually naming my variable done. Correct? And in my condition, what I'm writing is this. While not done, and I'm not going to show anything in here. I'm going to say do the calculation. I'm saying while not done. We just know not makes it opposite, correct? Right? I said done, and I made the word done zero, correct? The, the value of integer done zero. So when I say not done, if done is 1, it's going to be false. If it's true, if it's false, it's going to be true. So while not done, it is not done, right? So it's going to continue. Now I can say over here, printf, do you want to continue? 1 for yes. Or do you want do you want to exit? Want to exit? Or are you done? And in here I'm gonna say one for yes, zero for no. And then I'm gonna say scanf percent D, and address of done. What did I just do? So if they say yes, done becomes one. It stops. If they say no, done becomes false. It keeps going. So now I don't have a loop, not only loop, but I'm interacting with user, say, seeing what user wants. Enter two numbers. It starts with that. I'll put 10 and 20. Sum is this. Are you done? One for yes, zero for no. I'm going to say zero. Enter two numbers, 40, 50. Are you done? I'm going to say yes. Put one, and I'm done. I just wrote an interactive program with the knowledge that I gave you three seconds ago. So it's like it's not a big thing. It's just a loop and asking the user what to do. And user gives you an information. I just put the variable names nicely. OK? But that done thingy that you see, it's my habit. Whenever I want to write a loop and I don't know how complicated the condition is, because sometimes you have something they say, if uh, the student has a GPA that is less than 3, and the student passed three subjects, or the student did this, and the student did that, then give them OSAP. That's a big condition, right? For something like that, if you have such a big condition, you actually don't write a condition. You write a flag. That is called a flag. And you make up your decisions. You set the flag to true or false. Makes your life easier. Makes your program easier. OK? So this is essentially what a, a, a loop is. And you don't need to know any other loop. You can do everything with this one. All the other loops are exactly the same. OK? So, yeah, I'm going to actually introduce you to them just to show you what they are and what the difference is. So this loop that you are doing is like you are going to some fast food place and you are saying, I want a burger and a fries and a Coke. Right? It means you are doing everything manually. But there are loops that you can do it like this. I want combo number three. And you look at it, it's burger and fries and a Coke. Right? So we have stuff like that in C language. When you want to repeat something and the only purpose is repetition, you can use those. But they all translate to the same thing. So knowing this loop is enough for you to do everything. All right? So 
I can do something like this. So let me, oh. So let me save this as uh, C uh, uh, interactive loop. Let's see. All right. So just to give you an example, and I do not want you to use this loop because probably you're going to see it in the notes. I'm just giving you different samples for it. So I'm going to do the same thing in three different ways to show you what the differences are. But you only need the while loop because it's English. You're saying while condition do something. Think that way, write that way. The other ones that I'm going to tell you are essentially the same thing. But uh, anyways, so this is all different types of loops. So in here, I'm just going to uh, do a printf in three. So I'm going to do three. I'm going to do something three times in three different ways. First is the one that we, we know. So I'm going to say integer i, if you like, set to 0. And I'm going to say while i is less than 3, printf hello. and i++. Plus plus. We know if we run this, it's going to print hello three times. Correct? Are we OK with this? Next one. Pardon me? Of course. Are we good? You can do the exact same thing what we call a for loop. A for loop is a combo. What you see, are, and I'm not joking, so in here I'm going to say integer i, and I'm going to say i is set to 0 just to separate them. What you see from line 10 to 14 can be abbreviated into what I'm going to write. It is exactly the same. When they are translated into machine language, they actually get translated to the same thing. The second one is just the abbreviated version for it. That's all. Yes. Pardon me? Add one to y. We just mentioned, if you put a plus plus after an integer, it means add one. You can do minus minus if you want to. It re removes just for that. It's only plus plus and minus minus to add one to something. So you don't write i is equal to i. I could have written i is equal to i plus one, but that's too long. So line number 15 to 17 is identical to line number 9 to 13, not only by execution, but also in reality, when they are translated, they translate to the exact same thing. So essentially, a for loop, the first thing you write in a for loop happens once before the loop, as line 10. The condition of the for loop, i less than 3, happens every single time before the loop, like line number 10. The other one was 9, this is 10. Line, the i++ plus plus that is at the end of the for loop is the last thing that happens in the body of the loop, which is line 12. Identical. Absolutely no difference. Absolutely no difference. Are we OK with this? You OK with this? Are we fine? The other one is a tiny bit different. It's not exactly translated the same. I'm going to write it anyway. And I'm going to show you what it is. So it's i set to 0. Again, the t other two just know of its existence. You don't need to use it. Only use a while loop. OK? Do printf. Hello. 
i plus plus while i is less than 3. Okay? Now, if I run it, and I'm going to bring my... Remember that we had the line function? Remember we had the line function? I'm going to write it again. Void line. Okay? Line, uh, void line, void. That printed 50 characters. Remember that? I'm going to write it again over here. Void line, void for for i equals 0, i less than 50, and i plus plus. Put care. And put care new line. It does the exact same thing. It prints 50 characters. Remember that? It's just in a loop. Because I want to print 50 characters, right? Yes. Don't. Don't. Yes, but don't. Uh, it's just, you, you will see that people will do that. But as soon as you see it, take it out for now. Um, pause. Actually, let me record this. What are the rules for? It's a good, it's a saying, right? To be broken, they say, right? But when? When you know how to follow them, right? So I am telling you certain rules. Like, for example, my friend over here told me, can we actually, can we write the integer in here? Can we write integer i? set to zero. Can we do that? I say yes, but don't. Okay? So that's a rule in my class. Why? Because first you have to understand what the consequences are to be able to use it. If you now use it, you might go in trouble. So first, let's understand all the variables and where they are supposed to. So many of the things that I indicate as a rule, and I say it's a big no-no, don't do it, and maybe all of them. Later, when your knowledge of language is sufficient enough, you know how to break it to make your program better. For now, don't. Okay? So when I say don't with hesitation, really don't until we learn how things work. So now that line thingy of mine is this, instead of writing a printf with 50 da dashes, I just printed 50 dashes, and then a new line after. Yes. One more time. Uh huh. Oh, potatoes, potatoes. I talked about printf and put care. I said you can put percent %c. So I could have done this. I could have said, I could have said printf dish, this, right? Potatoes, potatoes. It's one character. If that, that makes you happy? No. No, 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 no. It's just because it's one character. Put character's job is, is to only print one character. That's why I found it uh, more suitable. Wait, so when you're sure it's only one, one character, put, put the character. Yeah. Because it's designed for only one character. Okay. Pr with print, with print of printing one character is like going grocery shopping with a 18 wheeler to buy three bags of things, you know? It's too big of a function for that. So now, the reason I created that line was that to separate these loops, so in here I'm going to say line, and in here I'm going to say line, to separate the three so we can actually identify how they work, okay? So now I'm going to run it, and you see they exactly work the same way, okay? The only difference the only difference between a do while and the other loops is that the only difference between a do while and all the other loops is that 
because the condition of do while is checked at the very end of the loop, do while happens at least once. So if you want to do something at least once, do while is a good choice. But what I would do, I would make my while loop, I make the condition true at the beginning, and then make it false later if I want to. So again, it is, it is implementable with while. But if, if you are writing a loop and you want it to be running none or more, that's while loop. Because in while loop, you can just break the condition right at the beginning and don't even go in. If the condition is false, while loop never happens. Do we, are we OK with this? But if the condition is false with do while, it runs it once, and then it doesn't do anything. So that's the only difference. But again, only use while loop for practice, for learning the language, and understanding logic. Only use this, but know of others too. This loop, so this one happens. So I'm going to say, I'm going to actually put a comment over here saying, do while happens at least once. OK? Are we OK down to this point? Yes. Single code, because it's a single character. When you have more than one character, you put double codes. That's why I say it's too much. So you are saying, I have series of one character. <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? That's why. So uh, yeah. When you have only single character, that's single code. Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK one? Are we OK, too? All right. So now when you get into CPP in OP345, you will see that there are many different types of loops that are more intelligent than these, but these are the ones. Uh, the class ends at 1.30, right? Right? So 1.35? 1.25. We have approximately 30 minutes left. You want to go to the end and go a little early, or you want to take a break now? How many people want? Anybody wants to take a break now? No, if you want to, please. If somebody wants to take a break, it means at least 10 others do, and they don't want to say. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a break, and we'll come back. So we understand how repetition works. And when you are looking at the notes, notes do this in a different direction, in a different uh, sequence. They tell you other statements first before repetition. Repetition, I think, is the thing that you need to know first, because that's what computers do. And then we're going to go to decision making and stuff. That's next. OK, for now, do you have the repetition? So review these in the notes. If you see notes are saying in other ways, go to the repetition part and see what they are. Uh, so the next thing we want to learn over here is this. Down to this point, we, we created functions that didn't receive anything and didn't return anything. But that can change. For example, for this line thingy that I have, I'm making it 50, right? I want this line to be any size I want. Why do I have to be only 50? So what I can do in the entrance of the function, which is between the two parentheses, I can actually write a variable. I can write over here, for example, int len, which means this is not like integer i that is inside the line. 
This is at the entrance of the line, which means you can actually put values in it while call it. And instead of 50, I'm going to put over here len. So now, in my prototype, I'm going to write over here in. I'm going to say over here the length of the line. So the name of the variable is not really important over here. The name, what, by the way, we call this an argument. The name of the argument in the prototype at the top is not important. You can even ignore it. I can actually do this if I want to. And don't write anything in here. That will do too. But that's vague. Somebody looking at this line doesn't understand how your line fun function works. So it's a good idea as a courtesy just to mention what that length is over there. In the function itself, that's where the argue, real argument name is. So now in here, in line, I can say over here 20, I can say over here 40, and I can say over here, oh, I did two of them? Yeah, 20 and 40. So when the program actually runs and reaches these, let me put uh, uh, breakpoints over there. When I run the program, when it comes over here, so when this line is called, it actually calls the line like this. So the line down here will be called like this. Line int len equals 20. That is how it's called. So inside line, the len becomes the 20 that you pass to it. Now take a look. See what is len? is 1, 1, Ugh. now it's 20. You see that? So actually, when, it's when the function is called, it puts that 20 inside len. Now your uh, line will actually print 20 characters. Next time, I'm running this again, so 1, 2, 3. When it comes to this line, this time when the line is called, 40 is passed to length. So you can actually now work on it like this. One is 20, the other one is 40. So functions can receive values. You can pass, it's not just to pass pack information. You can pa it's just, it's not just to do stuff in it as a separate entity. You can give them something to start with. If you want to, you don't have to if you want to. Line is a good thing, good example for it, because you don't want to have always the exact same line, right? You want to have longer, shorter, different types of things, so you can create it. You are already using it using put char, you are passing it a character to print the character. You are using printf, you are passing it a format string and variables. You are using scanf, you are passing the address of variables to it. So functions receive things all the time. Now you can design it too. So when you write a function, if like, for example, if I, um, let me just write, uh, save it over here. So this is, I'm going to say, let me just copy. Thank you. So now what I'm going to do over here, um, I, um, let me just bring it back up. So this is what, well, not that. That was on focus, so it, it, it undid that one. All right. So, so what I did over here, I created, um, just to demonstrate how the line is, is going to work, uh, I, uh, what I did was, hmm. oh, the line had an argument. I missed that one, so int length in here is int length. So 
going back to what we created. Now in here, I'm going to create a, a loop. I'm going to say i set to 1 while i less than or equal to 10 line i. And then I'm going to say, what do I say after? Uh, i plus plus. So we know that this is going to repeat this thing 10 times. And every single time is going to pass that i to line. So the first line that is printed is going to print only one character. The second one, two, three, four. So it's going to create kind of a triangle for me on a screen. Take a look. Ta-da. OK? So you can actually draw stuff with these things if you want to. So again, as you see, Functions can receive values, and throughout that values, you can do many, many different things. OK? Um, going back to what we had, um, E. Functions receiving values. C. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in here and say, oh. Two. That's one. And I want to bring the, uh, the loop that we had in here. Which one was it that we were adding stuff up? This is the one, right? So it's doing calculations one by one. So <clears throat> this one is doing calculations. So I'm going to copy this. Copy. I'm going to come back over here Oh, and paste it. OK, so I have calculate sum over there. Then I have main that does it few times until the user says how many times, right? See what I'm going to do? Instead of actually doing this, instead of doing this calculation, what I'm going to do is using the, the same thing that I've done. So in here, I'm going to say calcs. So this is a function that does calculations, void. And in here, what I will have is this. Instead of a while loop over here that receives the condition for the user, I'm going to have over here integer times. So it's going to tell me how many times I'm going to do. So in here, I'm going to say integer i set to 0. And in here, I'm going to say while i is less than times. And I'm going to do the calculation that many times. So now I'm going to say printf percent %d, and in here, and I'm going to put a column over here to just show the sequence of the calculations I'm doing. And in here, I'm going to say i plus 1. We already know that. And afterwards, I'm going to say i plus plus. But this function now receives times and tells me how and does the calculation that many times. I'll add the prototype up here. Now I'm going to write my main. Now in my main, I'm going to ask user how many times you want to do this. Int number of times. And I'm going to say C out. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, that's, that's C++ printf. <laughs> OK. Uh, how many times calculations need to be done? And I'm going to go to new line. And I'm going to show a prompt. Then in here, I'm going to say scanf percent D, 
an address of number of times, and then after this, I'm going to say calcs number of times. See what happened? I can actually create functions that receives values to do certain things so many times. The sky is the limit. You can do many things you want. First, we did just the calculation. Then we put that calculation in a loop. Then we ask the user how many times you want to ask the user, do you want to continue? Do you want to continue? Now what I'm going to do is actually asking the user how many times you want to do this. So I'm going to run the program, and we'll see how it's going to work. Build errors. Let's fix it. Uh, return value. That, that, that we don't need that. Oh, calcs, not cals. Calcs. OK. One more time. I'm pressing F10. Bring this at right and this one at left. So let's do this. Number of times has some garbage value. How many times calculations need to be done? I'm going to say twice. Oh, scanf. And I'm going to do scanf. And I'm going to say twice and hit enter. Now, number of times is two. It's going to call the calcs, passing the two two times. Therefore, when it comes over, when it comes over here, times will be two. I will be set to zero. While zero is less than two, it's going to do the calculation. So it's going to print one. Now it's going to do the calculation. 10, 10. And it's going to show it. Add one to i. i becomes one. One less than two. Yes, it's correct. Comes in here. Shows two. Oh, sorry. I put uh, something over there that was in the buffer. Um, Wrong uh, um, typo over here. That's, that's why it crashed. Again, we don't know how to write foolproof programs yet. That's why you put something wrong. The program goes bananas. We are assuming for now that users are sane people and they don't make mistakes, which is very impossible. But that's how we learn. Anyways, so one more time. So now if I come over here, you saw how it works. I'm just going to come to the while state, uh, to, the, to the loop. and. Uh, Continue the program. Oh, this is. So um, how many times? I'm going to say two. Oh. Two. And now it's going to say uh, calculate number of times passes two to it. Now times becomes two. And it's going to do this two times. So first one calculation happens. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake now. I is 1 times is 2. Condition is still true. 1 is less than 2. Second calculation happens. I becomes 2. 2. Less than two, that's a false statement. Right? Therefore, while ends comes out, program ends. See? So this is how you write a functional program. And it is very simple. But what you need is practice, OK? So the next lab that I'm going to write, this is what we are going to do. I'm going to write something that we're going to do the lab in the lab together, OK, with user interaction and everything. And then the DIY is going to be something more challenging you're going to do at home. All right? Are we OK down at this point? Questions? Suggestions? Yes. Pardon me? Um, first of all, you can YouTube Fardad and IPC144 or Go to the IPC144 organization. This is where everything is, IPC144 NBB. It's in your go to Blackboard, go to Subject. Your first announcement has all these things in it. You click on it, 
And when you click on IPC 144 NBB, down here, recordings of sessions, everything is in there. All right? And these are all direct links to the YouTube videos. All right. Any other question? Suggestion? Objection? Are we good? All right. All right, ladies and gents, that's the end of today. And uh, now I have to go home, write the lab for you. <laughs>